Um, thank you very much, Ian. And um, thank you very much, audience, for returning. Um, we certainly look forward to having a wonderful evening. Um, my apologies um, for Christian. He has a matter at school, and so he may be late um, joining us. Um, we want to remind you to continue to get involved in the presentation. Um, I certainly learned a lot yesterday evening um, from you. And so I hope that you can say the same about me. And um, weigh in, please, referees, um, table officials, commissioners, um, weigh in on the conversation and, and bring your take um, to the discussion. Um, it only lends for more, inf more information and a better understanding of the rules. Um, having said that, we, we would have covered a, a number of areas with step to the ball. Dead ball, live ball, um, the ball does not become dead for what reasons. Um, we went through all of that yesterday evening. We're going to kind of add to the package um, and um, with, with, with a few more videos, with maybe a video or two this evening. And then we're going to go into some goaltending, basket interference um, to show you um, some other areas where the team control and, and the status of the ball is um, intricately involved. And so having said that, I'm going to just turn it over to Ian now, who will just go with the video. Thank you. Okay. Confirm that you're seeing the video. Uh, it's coming. Okay, and here we go. Um, good, it's there. Here we are with the start of a boys varsity high school game. Very normal activity here. On the opening tip, there's no team control. The ball's tapped, goes in the backcourt. This player controls the ball, and now we have team control for black. We still have team control, the basics. Once the player releases the ball for a try, we have no team control. Neither team is in control. White grabs the rebound. Team control is theirs. Again, during a try, no team control. While the ball is dead after going through the made basket, before Black has, has the ball at their disposal, there is no team control. Once the ball is at their disposal, we have team control. On a throw-in, the team control is only for the enforcement of fouls. If this Black player pushed this white player on the trip up the court, while during the throw-in, it would be a team control foul. While the ball is in the air being passed between teammates, team control does not change. Rebounding action batted in the air. No team control until a team grabs and is holding or dribbling the ball. 
So try is in flight, no team control. Rebounding action, batted, batted, batted. No team control until the ball is held, controlled by black. Now we have team control by black. Player travels. We're going the other way. Let's take a look at a couple of interesting plays. Black is in team control, passing the ball. Pass is made to the wing, deflected by the defender. Important to recognize it's still team control situation. The black player uses his backside, displaces the white player, and it's correctly called a team control foul. If it was a bonus situation, which it appears that it is in this game, there are no resulting free throws because it was a team control foul. Black is in team control. Ball gets loose. Team control does not change. White 20 is fouled by our player who is stripped of the ball before White gained team control. So this is a team control foul. The crew in this situation didn't recognize that fact and awarded bonus free throws to White 20. This scenario is not all that uncommon and we need to be aware of it as a crew. Um, the ball gets stripped, the ball gets deflected, possible steal, the player who lost the ball reaches out and fouls. We need to make a determination as a crew whether the defensive player, now offensive player, has controlled the ball before the foul occurs. Really key that as a crew we get that play right. That wraps another edition of 5 Minutes on Officiating. Thanks for watching. If this had value for you, please give us a like and follow us on YouTube. We'll be releasing a new 5 Minutes on Officiating every week throughout the season. As always, share. Share this video with any officials who you think could benefit from it. Have a great day. Over to you, Freddie. Okay, PowerPoint presentation at um, control of the ball. Okay. Okay. I think we cheated a little bit by showing the video people. Um, now we're actually going into the rule, then we should have gone into the rule first, mm -hmm. um, and then the presentation. So I think sh things should be a little bit more simpler now in understanding, um, yet having an understanding for, for this particular rule. Article 14, so next, next slide. Going. Slide eight. Yeah, Article fourteen. I think you That's go up one. Mm -hmm. Up one slide. So go back one. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. Go down. Team control. Control of the ball. Go up. More one. Keep going. Team control. Okay, this is team control right here. Yeah. All right. Um, that's control of the ball. People were dealing with control of the ball, Article 14. We indicated yesterday that once um, a referee or, or an official um, master these two rules together with one or two other rules, um, they can literally pass an exam getting a, a, a mark of about 80%. Because all of the rules are centered around um, status of the ball and, of course, control of the ball. Having said that, the definition, for, the definition for team control, team control starts when a player of that team is in control of a live ball by holding or dribbling it 
or have a live ball at his disposal. There's that word again, having a live ball at his disposal. And to explain that a little bit better, um, you can use that on a throw in. The ball becomes live when the ball is placed at, at the disposal of the free throw shooter or at the person taking the throw in. So the ball do not have to come on the court. Huh? The, the ball do not have to be placed on the court um, for the ball to become live. Once the referee places the ball at the disposal of the free throw shooter or the person taking the throw in, the ball is live. Um, I have an experience of, of um, getting a, a question wrong right there, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> as a FIBO official, I was so gung-ho and so speedy about it, I just went and I got the answer wrong. So you have to be very careful, especially when you are um, taking an exam, with those kinds of questions. The next one is, um, the team control continues when a player on that Forgive me, dear. I'm into a little technical difficulty. Okay. The team control continues when a player of that team is in control of a live ball. So, the next thing is team control continues when the ball is being passed between teammates or between players. Team control ends. When an opponent gains control, the ball becomes dead. The ball has left the player's hand on a shot for field goal. That video that you just saw um, pretty much cover all of those items. Do you, anybody have a question or a concern or wish to add to that? Um, wish to add to the rules as laid out in Article 14 so far? Pretty straight, straightforward, I assume. Okay. Continue, please. Uh, can I get the next slide? Um, okay. All right. Am I seeing the right slide here? Am I? Okay. Go again, next slide. Next slide. All right. The ball is in control of a player in the arc of shooting for a field goal who finishes, um, who finishes the shot with a continuous motion which started which started before a foul is charged on a, I can hardly see because something is in the way there. Um, and I don't think I'm getting the full, the full um, presentation. So let me. Um, All right, so it says, this. the ball is in control of a player in the act of shooting for a field goal who finishes his shot with a continuous motion which started and that should have read before the foul is charged on an opponent player or okay. on any person permitted to sit on the opponent's team bench. Okay, let's see. Make sure I get it. Uh, okay, let me just find out there. I could feel goal of free throw. Okay. Um, to better explain it, um, if a foul is called, uh, they're actually saying, I'm trying to get some information out to you. If a foul is called on a player, team A have control of the ball, A1 have control of the ball, and A1 is then making a move to the basket. Um, gathers the ball and is in the act of shooting. If a foul is called on the defender, 
uh, moves away from the ball, all right? A foul away from the ball or a foul or a technical foul is called on any team bench member and the continuous action continues, the basket will score. All right, I think that, that is all I was trying to get across there. Okay, let's go to goaltending and interference. A little mix up here for some strange reason. Okay, in the friends. Sorry. Ian, I'm not getting my I'm, I'm not getting my um my um okay, a shot for field goal. I can't see everything on your screen, believe it or not. A shot for field goal or free throw begins when the ball leaves the hands of the shooter. It ends when the ball enters the basket directly from above and remain in or pass through the basket entirely. Now, in that case, we have some, there are times when you have a tight um, net and the ball, the shooter shoots and the ball goes in and it pops right back out. And you have referees who would say, hey, basket good. But the rule states, that when the ball enters the basket directly from above and remains within or passes through the basket entirely, then that shot is good. It ends when the ball no longer has the possibility of entering the basket. It ends when the ball touches the floor. It ends when the ball becomes dead. Now we're dealing with a shot for field goal and the free throw. So, I often say, um, the shot for field goal ends when a player releases the ball on a shot for field goal. The shot for field goal will end when it strikes the ring, it strikes the backboard, it strikes the floor. However, remember team control or the continuation does not end as long as the player feet who shoots the ball, both one foot is on the deck and one is up. That person is still considered to be in the continuous action, continu continuous motion change. Goal wow. tending occurs during a shot for field goal when the player touches the ball while it is completely above the level of the ring. Um, it, I think you have a question. Go ahead. Uh, yes, Teron Francis here from Grenada. I can hardly hear you, Teron. I'm having some challenges. Okay, let me see. If it's okay, nice. okay, much better now. Go right ahead, Teron. Okay, good. Like, um, yeah. from the from the slide before, you said if the if the net is tight and that ball go all the way through the ring, goes into that basket and pops back out, the shot does not count. That is correct. Oh, yeah, because okay. the ball. It ends when the ball enters the basket directly from above and remains in. And completely comes. All right. It remains within or passes through the basket entirely. Mm -hmm. Entirely. You good? Okay. So what, you, so what you're saying is if the net is tied up and the, the ball stuck in the net, that counts. But if it pops back out on its own, it does not count. That is correct, sir. Okay. Thanks. That is correct. Someone have, have a contribution? Continue? Shall I continue, Ian? The short for field goal ends when the ball no longer has the possibility of entering the basket. Sorry. Um, goal tending occurs during a shot for foul when player when a player touches the ball while it's completely above the level of the ring, while the shot on its downward flight to the basket, or after it has touched the ring. 
Um, the difference between goal tending and interference, and I'm going to go into interference um, as opposed to just going and, and giving you all these words on, on the screen, they're different. Um, goal tending is basically everything that deals with the ball, touching the ball, basically. All right? Basket interference is anything else that you touch that interferes with the ball and not necessarily the ball itself. So goaltending occur on a release for shot when the ball reaches its highest point and above the level of the ring and it makes its downward flight to the basket. Anybody that touches the ball or any player that touches the ball at this point commits a goal tendon. All right, violation. The ball strikes the ring. Once the ball strikes the ring, the shot for field goal has ended, has ended. The next thing for goaltending, a player shoots the ball and it hits the backboard. It, once it touches the backboard, it has a reasonable chance of going in and his ball is on the backboard. Any player on that team touches the ball, they have goal 10. Once it touches the backboard and it's making its way down to the ring, any player touches the ball at that point, they have goal 10. Question. That is your basic goal tending rule. Good. Now, let's go straight to interference. Question. Let's go, to, go right ahead. Go right ahead, please. Tyrone. Right. Yeah, so you said any player touches the ball. That's any player on the defensive team. Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, any player. If TMA touches the ball, then the penalty would be, well, it won't be a big goal tendon. It'd just be a violation at that point. The defender touches the ball, then you'd either shoot two or three or whatever the case may be where they're shooting from. Um, the same thing occurs for the free throw. Um, the free throw, goal tending for the free throw is slightly different. The free throw sh shooter takes a shot at no time a player can touch the ball, whether it's on its upward flight or whether it's on its downward flight, provided that it is above the level of the ring. All right? If team A touches the ball, no points can be scored. All right? Team B touches the ball, no point would be scored. And hence, um, as far as the penalty is concerned, receives a technical foul. All right? Um, well, if team B touches the ball, the point would score and the, um, the player who touches the ball will receive a technical foul. That is the basics for the free throw. Um, let's go now to uh, the interference. Before you move on, Freddie. Go right ahead. There's a question in the group, and it, goes back, it goes back to the, um, where the ball pops out, uh, did not continue completely through the ring. If, okay. comes, if the ball comes back out, how does the play continue? The, exactly, the play will continue. So, so the question is, how does it continue? You play on. There's no violation. It pops back out. Normal play. Continue playing. Thank you. I have a question on that. Right ahead. Okay, so that ball goes into the basket. Yes, sir. And it pops back out. However, the, the second it pops back out, the shot clock expires. Does a new clock start or does that be a shot clock violation? Oh, that is a wonderful question. Thank you so kindly. All right. Thank you so much. One of the things you'll have to determine, right, whether the ball did strike the ring. All right, if it, strike, if it struck the ring, all right, what happens? After the ball strikes the ring, what happens after that? Reset 14 seconds. It resets to 14 seconds. All right, if TMA gets the ball, TMA then gets a new 14 seconds. If Team B gets the ball, then Team B gets what? A new 24 seconds. If it did not strike the ring or touch the ring, then it is a what? 
24 second violation? That is an excellent question, my friend. I, I've never had a question like that before. <laughs> Thank you so kindly for that. Anybody else, Mr. Wayne, on that one? All right. If the ball is stuck in the net, it says, once it remain in or pass through, then the shot will count. The field goal or the free throw will count. It remains in or pass entirely through, then the shot will count. Does that answer your question? Yes, it did. Okay, great. Um, I'm just gonna go to the interference without re um, really reading a whole lot of this stuff. Um, the interference part now, all right? Um, the interference occurs on a shot for a goal when a player reaches through the ring, through the ring and touches the ball, provided that the ball is what? Above the level of the ring, all right? That's a basket interference. Interference occur, the ball touches the ring and a player touches any part of the basket. Now they say touch, all right, the rules say touch, but I, I'll, I'll just leave it with the rules sake. It says touch any part of the basket other than the ball, then the goal shall count. If, <clears throat> if the ball strikes the ring, all right, um, shooter shoots the ball, the ball, while the ball is in flight for, for a shot for a goal, um, the game clock signal sounds, right? Game clock signal sounds, and the ball strikes the ring, okay? No one may touch the ball after that, provided that the ball have a chance, a reasonable chance of going into the basket. If the ball, all right, any player who touches the ball at that point, they have committed a violation and the score, the, the score if it's on team B, then the score shall count. If it's on team A, then the ball automatically becomes dead. If the ball is on the ring and a player slaps the basket uh, on the backboard while the ball is on the ring, that is an interference. And so if team may slap it, it's an interference. All right, um, next team gets the ball. Um, if the ball is on the backboard and any player touches the backboard while the ball, that I mean really touch it such that it causes the ball to be dislodged or change its direction of, of, of going into the basket. It touches the backboard such, then that is an interference. Notice we're not touching the ball. The next item is the ball is within the basket. The question is, when is the ball considered to be in the basket? I'm putting that out to you. When is the ball considered to be within the basket? I would I'm putting that out to the audience. Anybody? <laughs> yeah, well, Sir Francis here, Grenada. Well, I would say the ball is considered in the basket once it enters the mouth of the of the ring. Okay. And um, okay. you want to be just a little bit more specific? Well, I would say once it enters the mouth of the ring, it hasn't gone all the way down to the net, but once it starts going down to the mouth of that ring, I, I consider it in the basket for me. Very good. <laughs> you're, break, you're breaking the plane of the basket. Once the ball breaks the plane of the basket, then the ball, it could be one millimeter. It could be one inch. Once it breaks that plane, the level plane of the basket, it is considered to be within the basket. So if TMB touches the ball, all right, it is an interference at that point. That's the difference. That's one of the difference. It is an interference. And so TMA would be accredited 
be credited with a few points. If team, if team A touches the ball, it's no violation. If team A touches the ball while it is within the ring, there is no violation. If team B touches the ball, there is a violation. All right, you got big time players. Any question there? Yes. Seems, seems to be everybody pretty much. Question, 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 right, question. Go right ahead. <laughs> question coming from Ken Phillips Barbados. Yes, sir. Um, team A lays up a ball. Ball like goes through the ring, through the net. One of his teammates come and hold on to the ring. Like while well, this process is going on, the ball already broke the net, and while well, the team B now retrieves the dead ball which is not at his disposal to pass in. Will the points be good or can those points be disallowed? All right. As a referee, you would decide whether the ball has actually passed through the ring. If the ball is passed through the ring, all right, um, and there is no dislodging of the ball itself that it popped out, you play on. All right? If the player who grabs the ball and hits it and it goes back through the ring, all right, then it's a violation, of course. All right, but if it goes in, just play on. But the the player that actually he just held, like he held the the ball already, brought the and being retrieved at the disposal of Team B now. So he has that player, Team A, Team A, did nothing, like did not touch the ball, nothing like that. With those points, that's what I mean. He did nothing with the ball. So, so, Mr. Kemar, am I understanding you that the ball went in, he held on to the ring or something like that? You're asking if the points would be disallowed. Yes, correct. Yes, sir. I was off. Ian. Hello. Hello. Yes, Friday, I can hear you. Yeah, I, so, I was off. You wish to weigh in on it? So the the question the question was from Mr. Ken Moore. So the ball went already is gone in, but his teammate jumps and just holds on to the to the ring. Uh-huh. He's asking if the points are disallowed or if the basket counts. Okay, I think the, the, the key question is the ball had already gone in. All right, the ball is in already. All right, um, if it pops out um, it, and team A actually held, um, held the ring, I mean team B held on to the ring, you know, count the basket. If team A, the ball had already gone in and remained in, so I mean, it's, I, it's it's almost like a gray area. That's an area really have to be there. But the thing is, the telling question here, the, the word is, it's in already. All right? It's in the basket. Now, is it in where it's just maybe a millimeter, just break the plane of the ring, or it's completely in the basket? That's where you'll have to make a decision. 
Correct. Because what I'm saying is actually in because it actually brought the net. It brought it went through the plane of the who the ring. Uh -huh. Brought the net. Oh, I mean that's all right for me as a referee. Let it go. Play on. Play on. Oh. Okay, all right. Yeah, for me as a referee, play on. Disregard any um, violation. The ball went through. It's gone. Yes. Gravity pulled that ball through, and it ain't like it's gonna pop back out. Okay. <laughs> Any Mr. other questions? Mr. Raphael had his hand raised. Yes, Raphael. Oh, no. <laughs> Make a contribution, Ralph. All right, continue. Must I continue? Yes, you can. Uh, okay. we have Mr. Um, Kenneth. Mr. Kenneth had his hand raised. Uh, yes, know. go right ahead. Bring, bring on the questions. We love to discuss basketball. Bring it on. Uh, my name is Kenneth Fiannan from uh, Suriname. Yes, I have sir. one question in both situations, the goaltending and interference. When do you say that the, when do you question a deliberate touching of the ring of or the basket or uh, accidentally touching um, of the basket, um, whether deliberate or not. Um, you know, if it's a non-basketball play where a guy is simply doing it all the time, um, um, you know, to disrupt the game, you certainly want to give a warning. Um, but you know, if, if they touch the basket, it's not a technical foul, according to the rule. Maybe 20 years ago, it would have been a technical foul. But not now. Um, if the ball is on, on the basket and you slap the backboard or touch the basket, all right, then um, based on who touch it, team A to team B, will determine who gets the point or who gets the ball. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Next question. We want to make sure that persons you get um, uh, you get an answer. If you're not sure, if you, if you feel that um, we did not give you a good enough answer, please say so. Um, indicate that, hey, listen here, um, I'm not sure. Um, you know, so we can maybe give another scenario or or, or 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 get a good feeling for the question again. So don't don't let it pass um, if you're not sure. Good to go. Good to go. Yeah. Anybody else? Um, no. I'm, I'm right ahead, good so. to go. Um, uh, good night. Um, a defensive player touches the ball on the basket while the ball is within the basket, thus preventing the ball from passing. You said if the offensive player commit the act, it's not an interference? That is not an interference. That is correct. The offensive player, while the ball is within the basket, touches the ball, no interference. The defensive player does it then, it's, an, it's a violation. Cold shall come. You good with that? All right, thanks. Yes, sir. <laughs> are you having challenge with that 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 call? I mean, in, in your league or, or officials are they refereeing that appropriately? Um, yeah, offensive interference. Um, mm -hmm. people would normally call. They would call. Oh, they would call a violation. Yeah. Oh no, it's 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 quite different. So um, I, I appreciate the question and giving that answer for you. So now uh, you can go back and really teach that. Yeah. Thank you. I, I missed the part on the free throw attempt when the when it's an air ball on the last free throw. Okay, let me go over it again. Thank you. Um, free throw shooter shoots the ball. All right. At no point, Nobody. a player is to touch that ball. All right, whether it's in its upper flight, all right, 
or on its downward flight to the ring. No player. Good. If TMA touches the ball, no point can score, etc., etc. All right, another team gets the ball. I mean, if it's the last shot. Okay, if team B touches the ball and the ball goes in, the point will score, and the player, that team B player, will get a technical foul. You good with that? Um, no, I'm talking about an air ball, like the last free throw. That's air balls. It subs the last free throw. It doesn't hit the rim. Oh, yeah, that's exactly what I was speaking to just now. The ball didn't hit the rim. The shooter shoot, the ball is in flight on a free throw. We good with that? Yeah, yeah. No player at that point may touch the ball, whether it's in, it's in its upward flight or downward flight prior to touching the rim. Freddie, I think yes, he, he's the, the, so no one has touched it and the ball has missed completely. So you oh, oh, on oh, that oh, play, yeah. you, you'll be at the free throw line extended. Okay. okay, yeah, okay. He didn't say the ball missed the ring. Sorry, sorry for that. Is that what you're saying? The ball completely missed the ring? It's yeah, it's an air ball. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. That's what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, then the it's ball becomes ball. dead. If it completely missed the ring or it hits the backboard without hitting the ring, then the ball becomes dead. Next team ball, they would get the ball at the free throw line extended. Thank you very much. Okay, sure. question. Good with that. Okay, great. Any other question? Yes, question. Same thing. Refer to Algineda. Okay, sir. Okay. And the same um, onto the free throw line. Yes, sir. Uh, on the are... second shot. Attempt. If the ball does not hit the rim, but hit the backboard, I want to know if it's a live ball still or it's a violation. Yeah. Okay. It's it become the ball automatically become dead because it did not what touch That's the true. rim. The rim. So it's the next team ball. Okay. Yeah. This right? is something I need to get clearance on. Yes. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, because sometimes what I. What I see happen here, um, uh -huh. right here, that ball will be, that shot will attempt and it hit the backboard but not the rim and they continue playing. Oh no, no, a violation was committed. It's a violation, it must hit the yeah, rim. Yeah, yeah, it must hit the rim. Okay, thank you. For, to, to continue playing, it's on the last shot of course, that's what we're dealing with. All right, good, thanks. Lovely, I'm happy that you, are, you, you went over that. Yes, good. <laughs> oh, lovely man! Any, <laughs> any others? Uh, any others? Not at the moment. Hello, I have a question. Yes. Oh, this is Andrew from Bermuda. Um, mm -hmm. First, apologize for joining in late, but um, point four. Oh. Yeah. I heard a point about point four where you said if an offensive player um, should touch the ball, it wouldn't be any violation because our offensive player. I understand the principle behind that because they prevented it from going in the basket. What if they yeah. touch? Prevented it from going to the basket, but basically knock it to one of their teammates. Um, That's prevented. You, um, you want to just go over that again, that situation? Okay, so point four says a defensive player touches the ball or the basket while the ball is within the basket, thus preventing the ball from passing through the basket. That is interference. Okay, yes. During so Deliberation, you did mention that if an offensive team should do it, it's not considered to be. Okay, I did mention, I did mention if an offensive player touched the ball under the same condition, yes. there's no violation. Right, so there's no interference. What no if interference, no violation, no interference. And, but if they touches the ball and it basically tapped it to one of their teammates? Fine. It's fine. Yeah, if they want to dislodge their shot, the offensive right. team, that's right. fine. So you're quite right. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you're you. You're quite right, sir. You're quite right. Well done, man. Well done. So just remember the, the, the you just the shot clock isn't reset. You you continue counting. So if they, yeah. they don't have any 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 more time, and it's stopped to one of their own teammates, then you've got a shot clock violation. Well, the, the ball had already touched the ring in this case. No, 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 it, it didn't. 
Oh. Okay. You see, my reason for asking, is I've been in games, sorry to jump in. My reason for okay. asking, I've been in games before where players have done that when the clock is counting, it's coming to the end of the game, and they, they wanted a three point to win and a two point to, 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 to draw. Their players oh, care that I'm going to interfere with this shot and try to get my teammate go for a, a three pointer. So that's my reason for asking. Thanks. Okay. Lovely. Anybody else just to weigh in? Good conversation, guys. I could even you know a lot. Don't be afraid. You know a lot about basketball. So I have a question. Yes, sir. Rohan Loban. <laughs> yes, from St. Lucia. Um, I joined in a bit later. I just wanted just one clarification. Probably it was already, but since. Yeah. I'm going to get George. My God. Can we follow the um, protocol? No. Mix a shot directly. Yes, an offensive player takes a shot from below the rim. The ball hits the um, the backboard, and it, mm -hmm. it is ascending, right? It is ascending. It, it gets above the rim, and then a player jumps because you know we have a lot of high jumpers nowadays, and mm -hmm. pick that ball off. It touched the backboard. It is ascending. It is, it has reached above the rim. It is, mm -hmm. It's not descending as yet, but a player okay. goes, it off. I guess that is legal, right? Is it? That is legal, sir. The ball is on its upward flight upward on the layup. On its upward flight. All right. So, basket goaltending and basket interference restriction does not apply because okay. the ball is on its upward flight. Right. It did not okay, touch the you. basket. And the okay. So once, once it's on its upper flight, even if it touches the um the backboard, once it's on its upper flight. Um, yeah. All right. Thank you. Now the other thing with that is, if it touches the basket, if it touches the backboard below the ring. And at that moment, a player touches the ball, then it's legal. Because remember, all right, in order to get a goaltending, all right, the ball must be completely above the what? The ball must be completely above a ring. the ring. The ring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Okay, sir. So. Dexter Good Douglas. Dexter right ahead. Douglas. Yes, Mr. Brown, I just want some clarity on the the part here with the interference where they're saying here a, player, a, a defensive player touches the ball or the basket while the ball is within the basket, thus preventing the ball from passing through the, pass the basket. One moment, please. All right, go right ahead again. Start again. Yeah. Could you give me some clarity on the, inter on the inter interference here? They say, um, you're saying here a defensive player touches the ball or the basket while the ball is within the basket. Thus preventing the ball from passing through the basket. Yes, Are you sir. saying if the if the offensive player does that, it's, it's not it's not interference? That is correct, sir. Okay, so so that could happen on a free throw or for a legal field goal. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, Mr. Brown. Mr. Mr. Brown. Mr. Yes, Brown. Sir. Go ahead. On the, on the free throw, nobody. So you might want to clarify that one on the when, free throw. When, on the last free throw. Yeah. On the last free throw, the, 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 the status of the ball remains the same. On the last free throw, the ball, once the ball strikes the ring, nobody owns the ball. However, if the ball happens to now go in the, in the ring, breaks the plane of the ring, all right, the ball now is considered in the ring. If a defender then touches that ball, while it's within, the status of the point then changes. The, uh, the, um, the free throw shooter then will get two points. It's now two points instead of one. If the offensive team touches that ball, all right, it remains the same. Right? That's it. Thank you. You wish to weigh in on it, Ian? No, I'm good with that. Yeah. <laughs> I know that was a tricky one there. I tell you, this status of the ball and live ball, I'm telling you, this is, this is where the game is played. And obviously tonight, these are the kind of questions that we need to clear up. Anybody else? Ian, can you go back to the goaltending, please? You want me to go to the goaltending rule? Yeah. Can I go to the goaltending rule? 
what I want is an example, just an example given based off of what's offensive goaltending, if there is any, and what's an oh. example of offensive interference. Okay, yes, sir. Let me go to that goaltending again. Okay. Uh, do you have the goaltending? Yeah, I think I have a goaltending video. Okay. Okay, yeah. You can keep going while, while I pull up the video. Yeah, okay. That's all that video, and I'll tell you when to go. No problem, sir. Goal 10 in the curse. All right? Once the basket, once the ball is shot, and the ball reaches its highest point, at that position, no one, no player may touch the ball. If TMA touches the ball, it then becomes a violation, and then TMB gets the ball. Good? If TMB touches the ball, TMA then will get two or three points, depending on where the shooter shoot the ball from. The ball is making its way down to the ring. No player may touch the ball at this point either. TMA touches the ball, the violation, next team gets the ball. All right? Um... TMB touches the ball, it's a goal tending, and TMA will get two or three points, etc. All right. The next goal tending is the ball, once the ball that is on above the level of the ring, of course, in order to goal tend, the ball must be above the level of the ring. Above the level of the ring. If the ball above the level of the ring is on the backboard, above the level of the ring and on the backboard on the shot for goal, any player that touched the ball, if team A touches the ball, it's a violation, next team get the ball. If team B gets touch it, then team A gets the point, whether it's two points or three points on a shot for goal. You good with that? Same, same scenario, the ball is on the, it's above the level of the ring and it hits the backboard and it has a chance of going in it's making its way down. At that point, no one may touch the ball. No player may touch the ball. If TMB touches the ball, the goal shall count. If TMA touches the ball, the ball will not count. In fact, the ball becomes dead immediately, and the next team gets the ball. On a free throw, the free throw shooter shoots the ball. No jump off. And this is on the last free throw, and to some, to some extent, the other free throw as well. No player may touch the ball while it's in flight on a shot for a free throw. Whether it's the first free throw, the second free throw, or the third free throw. No player may touch the ball. Okay. In defense. Okay. That's a goal tender. Those are your basic goal tending rules. Now there's a difference between goal tending and basket interference. Now let's go to basket interference. Basket interference, all right, is when the ball is dislodged, all right, um, or touched after the ball have struck the ring. For example, shooter shoots the ball, all right, and the ball is on the ring. A player hits the ring or the net, all right. If player A hits, hits the net or the ring or the backboard, team B will get the ball. A violation was committed, and team, team, team B would get the ball. If team B then hit it, all right, the goal shall count. All right, it becomes now an interference. They interfered with the shot. By hitting the, the net or hitting the ring or hitting the backboard, all right, with the intent to dislodge the shot. The next area I did not cover with the interference. I think I did. The shooter, while the ball is in flight on a shot for goal, the game clock signal sounds the end of period or the end of game. 
the ball strikes the ring, no one may touch the ball at that point. Once it strikes the ring, no one may touch the ball at that point. If you touch the ball, TMA, it strikes the ring and says it rebounds and have a good chance of going in and a player touches the ball. If team B touches the ball, the goal shall count. If team A touches the ball, the ball immediately becomes dead, whether it goes in or not. Immediately becomes dead. All right. Well, um, I'm, I'm going to leave the continuation for, for um, Jennifer and, and, and Vasquez. I think they got continuation. I would have given some example with the continuation, but I'm going to leave that portion of it. Any question? I have a question. Yes. Okay, no. Yes, Go on. Okay, wait, let me let me finish. Okay, so basically I, I, I have it, but so that means they don't have the cylinder rule anymore where the player defensive player could knock the ball off the the ring. Uh that don't that rule ain't there no more, basically. Okay. No, 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 not that ball. That ball is that, that rule is there. Um that's still okay. Let me explain the shot for field goal now. All right. Okay, team control ends on a shot for field goal, right? Once the ball strikes the ring, the shot for field goal is what? As what? End. So once the shot for field goal is end, it's anybody's ball, good? We good with that? So yeah, anybody good. then can go up there and grab that ball, <laughs> slap it away, I mean, do anything with it. Grab it, dunk it, slap it, hit it away. Anything. Provided that the ball is not within the ring. Once the ball strikes the ring, the shot for field goal is ended. <coughs> Once that happens, the ball belongs to anybody. Steve, the exception, the exception to that rule is if the ball is on a flight for field goal and the game clock signal sounds, and the ball strikes the ring. Nobody may touch the ball. Got it. Okay. Touch the ball. Uh, I think you got it now, right? Yeah, I get it. I get, I get. Thank you. Bingo. Lovely. Good, good, good one. I love it. It's a Tiron. Yeah. Right at Tiron. Okay. Um, well, one of my questions was what Mr. Robinson just asked. Because I was concerned about that rule. Um, the other one is um, you said that the, once the ball is on an upward flight, that player could hit that ball. If it is on an upward flight above the ring, like a player lays the ball up high above the ring on the board, it's on an upward flight. It's still interference if the ball touches that board before that player hits that ball. Okay, there's no interference. Once the ball is on its upward flight, uh -huh. on a shot for goal, there is no interference. Remember, restriction... The with respect related to goal tendon, the goal tendon rule starts when the ball reaches its highest point and it makes its way down. That's when goal tendon down. Right? So if the ball is in its upward flight and somebody touched the ball and it goes in, regular play, play on. Thank you. Great. Freddie? Yes, sir. The, the videos are set if you want to Okay, go ahead and show a few. Yeah. Williams swings it to Thomas through the paint. Well, they're just not a three-point shooting team. It's not a threat that they possess. Boy, gets the shot blocked from behind a goal ten on a five foot nine inch Thomas. Wow. Can he really walk that high? Watch right. this. He got it off the glass. Yeah, it definitely got to the glass first. So the right corner. All right. I think they give the answer just now. Mm -hmm. actually. Well, that is really something. That little guy at 5'9 really got up in the air. He's up there like mid square. That's pretty impressive. 10 points as you have to see the ball or an opportunity here in the second. It's call goaltender. I don't know about that one. I want to see that again. I don't think that was goaltender. I really don't. Okay. On the first video, um, 
did the ball hit the backboard first and then the guy slapped the ball? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Is it goaltending? Easily. Yes. Yes. Very good. Yes. Very good. But it's on its way down to the, to the basket, right? Excellent. I didn't see the, the last um, slide too well. The, the, the next slide is the it is looking at the, the, the referee has to make consideration if the ball has reached the apex. Oh. And it's on its downward flight. Okay. Mid square. That's pretty impressive. Go on. 10 points as you have to see the ball or not be here in a second. It's. Ah! Oh, threw it out of there. They're going to call goaltender. I don't know about that one. Okay. I want to see that again. I, I, I think that was goaltender. I really don't. I mean, I think Kobe. The rebound taken by James. LeBron James all the way in. Blocked by Embiid. They are loving it at Wells Fargo Center. Well, we know somebody who watched Game 7 of the Finals trying to imitate the... Whoa. Okay. The, the ball hit, it, hit the basket. I mean, the um, backboard. Sure did. Yes, yes. And then after that, what happened? He blocked the ball. So what's what's the call? Basketball. Basketball. Good. Goal tending. Goal tending. Excellent, yeah. guys. Lovely. Yes. <laughs> Outstanding. All right. And the, and the ball the ball was above the what? Level of the above the level of the ring. Excellent, people. Excellent. Continue. Let's continue. Let's continue. Any other questions? So back to the PowerPoint. Or you want some uh, more videos? Okay. You want more video? Yeah, I do. Yes, man. Put me, put me. King that time with the swat. I don't know, Mark. He almost got, looked like he got away with a little bit of a goaltending there. The ball did hit the backboard first, but we're not going to tell anybody. I think you say that. Great official. Wizards 96, the Rockets 94. Help! 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 George facing the double. Oh, somehow was able to swing away. I'm not sure that that ball was up high enough to be a goal ten. It looked like it was below the rim to me when... Whoa, that's a close one. That one we looked like it was Why we got to see that again? Let's, let's play that again. I call in block, Cleon. Play I don't know. What you got? I think that one is a block. Yeah, I call in you block. You see the guy block. holding on the net? Yeah, yeah, that's a oh, clean block. Yeah, that's a clean... That ball is still going up, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is holding on the net. Okay, what's the call there? Goaltending? Goaltending. The ball yeah. reached yeah. apex yeah. and going forward. Very yeah, good. Yeah, goaltending. Right. Excellent. Lovely guys, you got it. Um, excellent referees here this evening. Um, can I? Can I? Is it? Question. Is it, ahead, is it possible? I see that. That that Joel Embiid clip on the, the block on um, LeBron again. The Joel Embiid block on LeBron. Um, wh what I want to know is, did that ball hit 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 the um, backboard? Yes, and it, it did. It did it because did. the commentator said, "Yeah, he got, as I was saying, he got away with it. Yeah, he got away with it. No, 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 that 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 is my concern because remember oh. the commentator said that um he got away with it because a lot of people have the perception." That as long as the ball hits the backboard and, and they block it and they swipe it away, it's goaltending. But mm -hmm. but they do not take into consideration that ball might just be on its upward flight still, even after hitting the backboard. Probably that's what yeah. the referee saw. You never know. That's yep. just my um, Okay. At, at least you're explaining the rule very well, Shipney. Excellent. <laughs> upward <laughs> flight, hitting the ball, downward flight. You got that, you got that down the science. Excellent. Wonderful. Anybody so, else? So, wait, Freddy, you calling this uh, a goaltending? You calling this a uh, goaltending? From, from where I'm sitting, I can hardly see. I, hey, um, oh, on I, my phone. Okay, I can see it, Freddy. So, uh, let me, let me, yeah. I'm going to put it back up, Miss Robinson. Where, okay. where is the ball at the point of contact, at the point of the block? It's at the height right now. It's at the peak right now. That's all oh, I know. It's at the peak right now. Okay. It, to me, it's above the ring. It, it is, is above, above the ring. Ring. But isn't it still on its upward flight? It could be above the ring and going up. Uh, you see, and, and, and let me ask you this. There's sometimes where the ball levels off. Mm -hmm. 
before it makes that downward flight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be very careful that the ball has reached what is called that apex. Anything from that apex and a downward flight, the advantage must go to the shooter. Okay, okay, I, I can see that. So, okay, I, I can go with that. All right. We okay. Can. That is okay, what they call, allow me here, that is what they're saying, restriction mm -hmm. related to goaltending mm -hmm. shall apply. So what the first restriction, restriction the goaltending on a short for field goal is when the ball reaches its highest point. Mm -hmm. And from there, that's your first restriction. No one may touch the ball. Vuto Garo here. I'd like to clear this point, please. Yes, sir. From the Cayman Islands. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Vuto. If the ball is at its apex, it means that the ball is not on its downward flight as yet. It's at its high speed. Oh, I love this question. If, if I block the ball at its apex, mm -hmm. right? If I block the ball at its apex, it's not goaltending. Oh, I love if, this question. For if, it, if it started to descend, if that ball begins to descend, it is goaltended, but at the apex, I have up to that point to block it. Freddie, um, you, yes, you were just about to answer that one. I, listen, I love this question. And I'm going to be very scientific with this question. Thank you, sir. Um, once a ball, at the moment it hits the apex, the, the laws of gravity takes place, which means then if it's one point something of a millimeter, it's on its way down. down. Yeah. That is why they say once it reaches this point, believe me, gravity will pull that down if it's just point zero zero of a of a millimeter. And that's why I say I have to be very scientific. The same rule well, applies to break and dribble. All right? Well, once the you dribble see is yeah, go on. Mr. Brown, the, the, flight, the, the rule is self-explanatory. Yeah, if the in. ball is on its downward flight. No, no, no. Let, let right? No. So if a oh. ball reaches its apex, so if a yes. ball reaches its apex, is that a downward right. flight? That's my question. Okay. Let me explain this again. Once a ball reaches its apex, mm -hmm. the law of gravity will take place. You can't see it. All right? Um on its downward flight, but literally it's on its downward flight. If it's only but, but if, point if, zero of... <laughs> if, if you as a referee does yeah. not see that ball descending, oh, you could arrive at a downward flight. Yeah. The ball is at its apex, and that, that is where something has to be given. Vote. Oh, Vote. The, the apex Vote. means something. Okay, I mean, in the judgment of the official, I guess you could... Uh, Thank right. you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. I have no argument there. Okay. And, 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 and this is what I'm going to say to you, if the ball has no possibility at that point of going any higher up, yeah. it is coming it's down. It's making its way down. <laughs> yeah, then it's making its way down. But anyhow, I mean, it's good. Um, of course, in the judgment of the official, right? Um, you don't see a whole lot of that. When the ball reaches its apex, um, it's in most down. cases, referees, yeah, it's, it's going down. Mm -hmm. And most times, people, most of the referees will get it. But I love no that question. Back. I love it. Miss, oh, Mr. Rohan, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying, in other words, there's no middle ground. It's either <laughs> yeah. on its way up or on its way down. <laughs> yeah, that, and, and who's going to make the call? It's in your judgment. It has to be the referee. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's you. That's you right now. You're the referee tonight. You'll make the call. Um, if I may, um, yes, please. What, what I normally do because there are some players who are what we call flat shooters. Mm -hmm. So, as for me, once the ball reaches its point, for me, and I don't see it ascending mm -hmm. and it's above the rim, I will call goaltending because there are some players who are flat shooters and the ball tends to plateau before coming down. It's not going any higher, it just plateau before coming down. But if you look at a few of Jordan shots, you'll see a lot of that. Okay, but you have to determine whether the ball is above the rim, right? Mm -hmm. Certainly, that's what I'm saying. It's, once okay. it's above the, above the rim, it's not seems to be um, going any higher. I call that apex. Even if it that's goes forward and you don't see it descending, but as long as it's not ascending and it's above that rim, it should not be interfered. And it has the possibility of going into the basket, into the rim. Right. 
Thank you so kindly, sir. That's a new one for me. And I certainly appreciate that. And I think you're quite right. Anyone else? I, I love it. Anybody else wish to weigh in on the goaltending basket interference? Now, another yeah. interference. Remember, a shooter, A1 shoots for a shot for goal. And um, the ball is on its way down and near the ring. And a player reaches through the ring and touches the ball. That is considered interference. Good. Um, so if TMB touch it, the shooter will get, a, will get the required points. And it's not a technical foul, people. 20 years ago, it would have been a technical foul. It's no longer a technical foul, all right? Same as slapping the back, backboard, not a technical foul. And so if, if TMA then touch the ball, of course, the ball automatically becomes dead and no, no points would score. Anything else, guys? You could take my thing I'm off. Um, let me take that off because I. Any other contribution to the goals ending? Basket interference. Ladies and gentlemen, I I am um, I like the um interaction. Mr. Brown. Um, yes, sir. Go right ahead. Um, Abdul Urshad from Jamaica. Yes, sir. Um, one second remaining in the game. Vibration on the backboard, no chance of the ball scoring. Is that interference? I, if you write on an exam, if you write a test, the telling um, phrase is no chance of going in. And the rules say it must have a chance, a chance of going in. But if you write out the question for a test and you put have no chance of going in, then it can't be a violation in any event. You, you get where I coming from? So you're giving me the answer. You're really giving me the answer. You're saying it has no chance of going in. So in the judgment of the official, you play on. <laughs> you give me the answer, really. <laughs> you see what I mean? <laughs> oh, my goodness. I, I'm sorry to, to, to say it like that, but yeah. If you say if you say examination a test is like that, yeah, they actually gave you the answer. So, so Mr. Brown, a question yes, a question came to me, uh, in terms of mechanics, Ooh. can the lead official or should the lead official be calling the goaltender? Okay, um, um Ian, you wanna. You want to weigh in on that one? The responsibility the of that? With the mechanics, yeah. All right, I can, in I can terms of mechanics, that you yeah. that's the responsibility of the center. Yep. Primary, the center, and secondary, the trail. All right. That's the but answer. Why? Um, yeah. Because the, yeah. The, the lead should be looking to see if there's any falls, any violations um, happening in the Kiwi, because remember, you've got a shot for field goal. Excellent. Um, just to add to that point, the center, yes, um, can see the what? The trajectory of, of the, the ball. ball. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and the, the best, lead, view, the best right. view to see if that ball is on yeah. upward flight or yeah. on its downward flight. Or in terms of Woot, if it's reached the apex. Oh, yeah, Mr. Woot's in the apex. I will never forget that one. You agree with that, um, um, Carla? Oh. The center got it. The center have a better position to see, um, to see the play. And the lead official normally, they're normally um, um, refereeing um, the, the torso, right? Basically between the knees of the player and just below the, um, the neck or the chin of a player. They, their, their vision is generally in that, in that um, um, arc, um, lead, lead officials. Mind you, they can see a little farther than normal, but um, 
they get good vision between that arc. Um, the center really got a whole lot. They, they have a whole lot of lot more um, people in their view, and they can see the trajectory of the of the shot. Now, it doesn't mean that the, the trail can't make the call if nobody make it. So I won't say no, but it is the trail as I mean the, the center as Ian indicated. Yes. But uh, like like we said in mechanics, mechanics are guidelines. Yep. If neither one, if neither, if the center or the trail did not call it and it did happen, uh, somebody's got to call it. Outstanding. Did somebody already cover where ref, you know, like where referees are supposed to be on the court, or is that in another module? Because I don't think I know who is center, trail, lead, none of that. Oh wow. Um, Ian, we have a presentation on the three yes, points in officiating, do. right? Yes, we do. Oh. Yeah. Outstanding. Thank you. Yeah. Outstanding is right. We have a presentation coming up. <laughs> That's great. Um, anything else? Anybody else wish to weigh in? I have some other articles. I have a few articles, but I won't go because I think some other persons will be speaking to them, especially the continuation. Yes. Um, any other um, information I need to go over, um, Ian? No, I, 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 let me see. Okay, I'm just checking to see if there are any more questions. Not at this yeah. time. Okay, so I pretty much um, cover. Okay, let's go over some things. Um, when does a ball become live? Voice item, any item. Anybody? And the ball is placed out there? Disposal of the intro. Player taking a throw in or a free uh, throw, throw, or right. then the what tosses the ball. The crew chief tosses the ball, ball is live. I've, Good, Mr. Brown. I've uh, got Mr. Dexter Douglas has raised his hand. Uh, yes, please go right ahead, Dexter. Yes, Mr. Brown. I just need some clarity on this um, play. If A1 attempts a field goal, yes, sir, and there's of uh, the ball foul B2. Fouls A3, and the attempt that A1 would have made is successful. What happens after? There? Is it is it um is it a new shot clock for for Team A, or or is it points good the foul and then in Bongan, <clears throat> is it Team B possession for the fresh clock? Okay, your question is, um A1 in the arc of shooting, I suppose. Is yes, that correct? yes. Shoot yes, for yes, field yes. goal. Yes. And, and there's the off the ball is foul. Is the ball in the air? In yes. Flight? And there's off the ball foul. And, 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 and simultaneously, off, the ball, the basket is scored. The basket is scored, and B fouls who? Pardon me? A3? B fouls so I'm, A3. I'm going to again. A1 yeah. attempts a field goal shot. Yes. B, B2. Fouls A3 off the ball and the and A1 the field goal the field goal attempt is is good. Okay. Okay, it's um um if if TMA is not in the bonus, all right, then mm. TMA will get the ball for the foul and you play on. If TMA was in the bonus, then you would shoot a bonus. Mm. Okay, okay. Thank you then. Yeah. Anybody else? We got about seven minutes. So in that, okay. yeah, good night again. In that situation that Dexter just now asked, and the, the question that Dexter asked, if the basket score, mm -hmm. Team A gets another possession out of bounds sideline. Yes, because of the foul. B foul who? A right. I think there's a there's a. Um, there's a question to this end in the interpretation of the rules. B foul A, while the ball is in flight on the shot for goal, the goal will count, all right? And you can't disregard the foul, you can't give the, right? B foul A, so A then will get the ball. Good time. Is that a um, um, is that a foul in special situation, um, Ian? That, that may be a foul in special situation. I want to reserve that one. 
because after the shot go in, I will reserve my answer on that. Um, because if the shot goes in, it'll be team, team, team B's ball. And because of the foul, it's team A ball. So you may have to go into a jump ball situation and becomes a foul in special situation. But I will, I will give you the correct answer um, um, by tomorrow for sure. But if you're looking at fouls in special situation, after the shot went in, it would have been whose ball? Team B. And then because of the foul, all right, on A, all right, you have team B possession, now A possession. So who gets the ball? Um, I would stick to the point that um, it is perhaps a jump ball situation, but I'll give you the answer for sure tomorrow. Good to go? So you got a good point there. Anybody else? I'm Francis here from Grenada. Mm -hmm. I don't have a question. I just want to say that tonight's session was very, very educational for me. I've learned a, very, a lot tonight. Um, a lot to apply to here in Grenada for me and my fellow referees that are on tonight. So I just like to say thank you guys. Yeah, man, I appreciate it. Um, um, these, are, these things happen all around, all right? Um, don't feel bad. It happens even in my country. We still have some challenges with but these types of rules, eh? If we have a few fair minutes, Ian, can you play the rest of the, the, the video so I could <laughs> assess? Yeah, man, go right ahead. Let me see what you guys, uh, let me see y'all refereed again. Ian, play some videos. Okay. They want to referee a game. Let's see, how, let's see these referees. So far, they're 100%. So far. Facing the double, oh, somehow was able to swing away. It will count as a goal count. I'm not sure that that ball was up high enough to be a goal ten. It looked like it was below the rim to me when I mean it looked like it was above the rim. I think he may have gotten a good block on that one. I think and when you talk about Denver, you talk about a quote unquote starless or super starless team. McGee You're not getting anything? No, no, no sir. Yeah, your computer screen. Oh, I'm sorry. You were into it, though. We see. You, you sure was. I remember that last one. Are you seeing it now? Are you seeing it? Yes. Yes, yes. yes we are seeing it now. Be a goal ten. It looked like it was below the rim to me when I mean to me, it does look like it was above the rim. I think he may have gotten a good block on that one. I think and when you talk about Denver, you talk about a quote unquote starless or super starless team. McGee Wow, something looked very freakish about that play. I'm not so sure that that wasn't a clean block. Let's take another look. Oh. Okay. I'm not sure that was on. What are your views there? Yeah. Clean, clean block. That one Anybody close. Else? That one really close. I that's an apex. Apex. That, that's what I'm talking about. The apex. <laughs> that's, apex. that's clean block, though. That's clean block, though. Clear block. The ball right is still going up. Right on the apex. The ball is still going up, actually. It is still going up to me. Yeah, the ball actually was still going up. Still going up. up. Oh, I think yeah, it reached the apex. Right there, it reached the apex. 
Or no. <laughs> Anybody else, man? I need referees making this call. Referees make some that, call here. That's claim block. Okay, got two blocks. No goal tending, right? No goal tending. Let's no look goal. at it again. Let's look at it again. We, we, we don't give goal tending for Apex. Okay, all right, all right. Oh, shoot. Okay. <laughs> all right, Mr. Wolf, I, I think you're right. <laughs> Uh, I'm not so sure that that wasn't a clean block. Let's take another look. I'm not sure that was on the way down yet, Doris. It just looks so freakish. Your mind sometimes, Doris, but... Was it or wasn't it golden? Well, I needed that look, mm. but it certainly looked like the ball was on the way up. And yeah. I th well, that's a tough call. I, I, I think this one on goes one. back to what the gentleman was saying. Some yes. people that look straight, and that kind of look straight is like, mm, could be yeah. upside down. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want you to remember this. I want you to remember this. Uh, a, a call, a call like that is in your judgment yeah that's a judgment there it's going to be in your judgment but in, in, in your judgment you've got to analyze in your mind you've got to play it back where was the ball at at the time of contact all right so just remember that you know if other people will look at it but you, you've got, at the end of the day, you have an official, you've got to make that call. But you have to be able, what did you see? Because if you have a referee supervisor or referee manager, they're going to be asking you about this play. What did you see? What caused you to make your decision? So you've got to be able to articulate, I felt the ball was either on its, still on its upward flight, or the ball had reached the apex on its, on its downward flight, hence my call. Understood? Indeed. I say, cool. I, I, say claim, I say claim black because the distance from the um, from McGee to the rim and, and the, the, the shooter, he was, um, was kind of in between the shooter and the rim, so he would have catch the ball when it not Immediately, immediately leave the hand, but but the ball would have still been on on the the, um, the upward flight. Yeah. I have a um, question. Go on. Um, is is the reason that um 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 you're sensationalizing the game and for the spectator why you didn't make the call a good enough reason? <laughs> no, no. Ho, ho. I, and I want I want if you are thinking of what the crowd is is going to be saying about you, uh, I don't think officiating is for you. Mm. When you make that oh. call, when you make a call, it should be about the game and the call that you're making. So, so I, I want, you, you, you're gonna look at the call, is either in your view the ball in that particular call, the ball is still on its upward flight or on its downward flight with a chance. I, 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 like, here? I, I really love the discussion on this one. Mm -hmm. This is indeed very tough. Mm -hmm. What? Mr. Brown. Yes, go right ahead. Um, I, I, I also want to weigh in the fact that in a live game such as that, your splits of a second of decision yes, uh, has to be clean. Yes. And, and, um, we, mm -hmm. we are looking at the rerun in a That's slow mm -hmm. So yeah. in that live game, it, it's, mm -hmm. it's, really, it's really that you have a keen eye and a keen position to make that call. So I, I just want the referees to understand that uh, in a live game, that you don't have all this time to speculate. You just got to make that call, and you have to stand with the call. Okay, so, Benji. So, so Benji, uh, uh, let, me, let me add in here. Hence, this is why on any shot, that when a shot is relieved for, for, for a, a try, if you're using three-man mechanics, 
that center has to be looking or has that primary responsibility to follow to follow the trajectory of that ball with the assistance of the trail because the center is in the best position to see the arc <coughs> of the ball where in the arc the ball falls okay mr Ro rohan you've got your hand up go ahead yes. Rohan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My, my question simply is, if a, if a referee who is not coming, that Ian, you said the, cent, the referee in the center should make that call. What happens if the trail or the lead makes that call? The, and the, the center doesn't agree. The, okay, understand this. The Although the center has Primary, primary responsibility. responsibility. Yeah. The yeah. trail has what is called secondary, so assistance to view. It's, it's, what would happen is that the three of them will get together and discuss. Mm -hmm. And okay. what should happen is that the person who has primary is given the call because it's their so, primary responsibility. So then you are saying to me, if I'm a trail, or lead, and I make that call, and the center who has the primary responsibility in the huddle says that is that wrong. wrong. The, the call will be changed. Can I weigh in you? You can weigh in. Yeah, um, it isn't a matter of right or wrong, it's a matter of seeing the play. play. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the thing is, with the trail now, with the new mechanics, mm -hmm. um, the trail now operates in such a way that they actually can see it. make that call mm -hmm. if the call, if the play is on their side of the court. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Because if once the ball penetrates or it goes to the hoop, the trail does what is called a what? What type of step? Side Come on, referee. Mm -hmm. They cross step away That's from up. the play mm -hmm. to get a good angle to make the call. So they don't go to the play. They actually go away from the play to get a good angle to see the play in its entirety. That's proper distance. You don't want to be too close that you cannot see the play. So once the ball is penetrated in the um, um, restricted area, the trail or the lead is going to do something called a cross step, meaning they're going to cross the step spaces. away from the play so they can get a good vision and a good angle to make a call. So there are times when they actually can make that call. Yeah. Okay, but, but, but my question was not answered. What? Okay, go on. Let me, let me say it again. Yes, sir. The prime responsibility is the man in the middle, I understand that. But the call was made by a trail or a lead. So you all got in a huddle, and the, 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 the prime responsibility person said, listen, it was X. Oh. However, the trail blew Y. What happens if you all agree with the primary responsibility person? Are you going to change the call or it stay as is? Crew mm. chief makes the decision. As that, that, exactly. Um, the crew chief makes the decision. The, the, the crew chief will then make a decision. Um, now, the, the person who makes the call, all right, number one, they, they, they got to ask for the help. Mm -hmm. You got me? Mm -hmm. um, they make the call, and if they feel that perhaps in their judgment they may they may have been wrong, mm -hmm. then they can go and consult the officials for help. Right, right. All right, they right. gotta ask for that help. All right, everybody don't automatically run to that 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 official and say, "Hey, friend, I don't think that's the right call," etc. Mm -hmm. You got me. And then once the decision is made. That mm -hmm. player who blow the whistle mm -hmm. will make the call. Oh. Make the adjustment. Yeah. Wrong make the adjustment. Right. That's yeah. what I'm asking. Yeah. Right. So in that situation, you can change the call. Yeah. That's what I, I want to hear. I, I dare some situation that may be involved in that, particularly if the game clock goes off. All right. Um, 
they may um, they may want to determine where the ball was, what time on the clock, etc., and use the IRS system. There's a whole lot of situation that you can really put in there, but um, I see where you're going, Coach. Yeah, Mr. Brown. I'm looking yes, for a particular answer. And, and you're not going to get. I mean, like I'm not getting the answer. I'm not looking. Oh, you're, 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 you're going to get it. That's in the judgment. Yes, you all are dancing That's in the around. judgment. Yeah, I got to. So, oh, my thing is I this: to referee your if, game. <laughs> if two oh, outweigh one, one, and the one is the one who made the call, and he had really made a mistake, are you are you entitled to change the call? No, he would make that. He would make that adjustment. Yeah, but he is he entitled to change the call? Is he entitled to go back and say, okay, my fault? Um, I have never seen that I change a change goal the call. call. Mm -hmm. oh, that's, what, that's what I'm asking. Okay, yeah. and, and I, I, I think... That would, be, that would be a review, it. lessons learned. Yeah, that would be a review, especially in the event there's a short clock violation while the ball is in flight mm -hmm. or something like that, and the short clock goes off. Or the ball is in flight and the game clock goes off to end the period or end the game. Then you may review it. You know this? You got me? So, I don't know. Um, no, but Mr. Brown, what I want to... Even then, you may not review it. There are some things about reviewing, so I will... I correct. Will Mr. Brown, what I'm, I'm going to say, in our leagues, in, and, and, and we, 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 especially here in CBT, I don't know of much... If any, that use um, the IRS system. IRS system in in the normal league. Yeah. So yeah. you've got you've got again, as we said, this is your judgment. You have got to yeah. make that determination. Yeah. Beer now, everybody else has the ability to review it at a later stage, but you've got that decision to make right there and then in the moment okay. at the heated moment of the game. Okay, and I guess we could, we, like, this is a good yeah. point to stop on. Oh, yeah. Um, the good thing um, about this whole exercise, when you made a judgment or when you blow that whistle, every one of you stated why. So if you say, hey, it was gold 10, then you was able to say that the ball reached its highest point and on its way down. Yeah. And if you, you, if you did not blow that and you say, hey, the ball was still on its upward flight, so the principle of goaltending and basketball and difference, I think, came across pretty, pretty good based on the answers you're given and the reason for those answers. And so I really wish to um, commend all of you. You've done an excellent job. I love the question, believe me. Oh, some of those questions I've never heard in my life. And so um, this is why we encourage um, um, interaction and we don't really want to push a whole lot of information on you because... You know this stuff. Some of this stuff, you know it. So thank you so kindly. Um, what we have tomorrow, Ian? We have what? We, we go. Arc of shooting? Yes. I think we have the arc of shooting, shooting. which really Time cares over to what we've been doing here this evening. Thank you so much, people. You did an excellent job. Okay, thank you. Thank you, and good night. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Thank you.